Hello, and welcome to the Health Essentials Podcast, brought to you by Cleveland Clinic. I'm your host, Deanna Pogorels. Today, we're talking about the immune system. It's your body's first and best line of defense against internal threats like inflammation, as well as external threats like viral and bacterial infections. In the face of the COVID-19 pandemic, you might be wondering whether there's anything you can do to strengthen your body's immune system. And so joining us today to help us get to the bottom of that is Dr. Leonard Calabrese. Dr. Calabrese is a rheumatologist who heads Cleveland Clinic's section of clinical immunology and specializes in diseases of the immune system. Hi, Dr. Calabrese. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Just a note to our listeners that we are recording virtually today to follow safe social distancing guidelines. And also please remember that this is for informational purposes only and is not intended to replace your own physician's advice. So Dr. Calabrese, can we start with just a little bit of a primer about the immune system? What is it? What are the different components of it? And how does it work to protect us? Yeah, you know, I can't think of a better point in time uh, than now to talk about the immune system and immune health. Um, as we're in the middle of this pandemic, uh, or at least getting to the middle, I hope, um, there's just so much out there talking about um, our immune system, our resistance, how we respond to this, what it contributes to in terms of this disease. And that as an immunologist who's been doing this for decades, I'm really impressed by how much bad information is out there. Offering people quick fixes and easy ways out but uh, the immune system is really a remarkable organ. You know, I, I look at fitness, I look at wellness as being multidimensional. You know, we want to train to get fit. We go run, we increase our aerobic capacity, we lift weights to become strong. Um, we do brain games to make our, our minds strong. But the real question is, uh, you know, what do we do for our immune system and, and, and why should we be concerned about it? Um, our immune system are all those defenses uh, that reside within us that defend us against danger. That's the easiest way to think about it. It's not just infections because, you know, we're covered with infections and infested with infections. And we get along with most of our infectious brethren quite nicely. But from time to time, infections become dangerous, ranging from the common cold to COVID-19. Our immune system also protects us from other sorts of danger, from uh, allergic responses and toxins and uh, harmful effects of uh, our own bodies um, kind of take out the garbage uh, machinery that has to get rid of all of our dead cells. So the immune system is just tightly woven into our physiology. And I like to think that when we're well, and you might want to say, well, what does wellness mean? And I think, you know, we all recognize wellness, you know, when, when our lives are going good, we're well. It's not just being free from disease, it's being robust in mind, body, and spirit. When we're well, our immune system is you know, really humming along um, uh, and working at, at a very high rate of efficiency to protect us from all these dangerous signals. Um, we think about it as occurring in two basic compartments. One we call innate, another we call adaptive. The, Easy way to remember this is that innate is our early warning system. You know, you prick your finger on a rusty nail on a Sunday stroll through the park and you're touching the, the, the fence. You know, if that rusty nail has a, a dangerous bacterium, uh, we have defenses located in and under our skin and other areas and set off alarms to tell us there is danger here in this finger, we need to dispatch it. All of these cells um, and proteins and mediators um, come to the fore. Um, we either heal it up and a few days later, our finger is fine, or a few days later, our finger is festering. Now we need help. And that calls in the adaptive immune response. And those are kind of the, the heavy uh, weaponry of our immune system. And we think of those as T cells and B cells and things that we've kind of heard of, but these are, are cells that are very specialized and can uh, respond with great precision and accuracy. Together, innate and adaptive immunity are a powerful force. They identify 
when a stimulus is dangerous or not. They tell the immune system what is the danger. They tell the immune system how to dispatch it. And lastly, they tell the immune system where to go find it. It's a remarkable system and we need it desperately now more than ever. What kind of factors go into how strong our immune system is or isn't in that reaction? Well, it's kind of an interesting phenomena. Uh, most of us, our immune system works pretty good. And, uh, uh, but, you know, before uh, a, a century ago, um, a lot of people died very young because of bacterial infections before the introduction of antibiotics. Um, so today we recognize that, you know, our immune systems do a pretty good job, um, but uh, there are some caveats. First of all, our immune systems work better when we're young, not tiny babies, but after we get to be around adolescence, our immune system is really at our peak, probably until we're about 18 or 19. I'm sorry to tell everybody that, but after that, you know, we're, the, bi the biologic imperative is reproduce and go away. But we all want to live to be long and we want to live to be healthy. So over time, our immune system works well, but the most common form of deficiency of immunity is the immunodeficiency of aging. And it is inevitable that over time, our immune system runs down. And I don't think that anyone has to uh, have, be convinced of this just to watch the news and see that the, probably the greatest single variable in COVID-19 epidemic um, is age, along with other what we call comorbidities, diseases that also the immune system is contributing to. So age-related immunodeficiency is very calm. There are other factors, of course, you know, diseases like uh, HIV AIDS, where our immune system is attacked by the HIV virus. Um, some uh, rare diseases are children that are born with deficient immune systems and others who uh, adults develop immunodeficiencies in early life. And then lastly, there are diseases uh, of the immune system from secondary causes. We, de we develop cancer or we have an autoimmune disease and we have to take immunosuppressive drugs. All of these tend to uh, suppress our immune system. And then lastly, People who are in poor physiologic condition, um, people who, you know, weigh more than uh, they should, uh, people who have um, uh, diabetes, uh, cardiovascular disease, um, metabolic syndrome uh, with hypertension, uh, fatty liver, and beyond, all of these individuals have dysregulated immune systems. So there are a lot of different ways to suppress our immunity. Some are genetic. Some are acquired, some occur with age. Are any of us immune to the coronavirus, um, you know, either without having it or after having it? That's a really great question. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say immune. We say immune uh, in my business. That means that, that you know, we have seen a, a, a danger signal and we have memory of it and we defend ourselves against this. Well, since this is a new infection, none of us have immunologic memory for um, uh, COVID-19. But um, if we look through these remarkable, you know, epidemiologic studies going on now, you know, why in a group of people do, you know, nine out of 10 get it and one does not? Is that because that person had less of a viral exposure or does that mean there's something special about their immune system that protects them. We're, we don't know yet, but that's a very important point. And some of us are just more resistant to infections than others. You know, just look at your own family. Who's the person that always gets the cold? Who's the person that doesn't always get the cold? So work in progress. Yeah, and one thing we've heard about COVID-19, like you mentioned, is that people who have the compromised immune system tend to be more at risk for a higher infection. and um, is that the only thing that contributes to how people like, are experiencing this virus and also what kind of things can cause the immune system to be compromised? Well, there's a lot of reasons for immune compromise. I, I, the easiest one is when people are taking immunosuppressive drugs, when they're taking, 
you know, uh, steroids, as we say, you know, these as uh, uh, often used to treat all types of allergic and autoimmune diseases. People are taking immunosuppressive drugs for serious uh, immune mediated diseases. Um, um, patients with cancer who are getting chemotherapy and uh, radiation, this all compromises immunity. So that's an easy group. Second group are people that just have these immune diseases. They're not, you know, we don't think of them as being totally immunosuppressed, but their immune system is different than, than healthy people. And we actually don't know what risk that uh, imparts um, in terms of COVID-19. It might be mild or uh, a moderate or severe, uh, it may be far less. Uh, we're just learning that right now. And then lastly, there are a variety of genetic factors uh, 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 that would contribute to that. But the greatest risk factor to the immune system um, that I know of that is predictable is age. And you know, people less than 50 uh, tend to do quite well. People less than 40 uh, do really well. Um, and there are sad and devastating exceptions to all of this. Uh, but as we get greater than 50, 60, 70, 80, um, we think that the changes of the immune system, changes in our immune health, uh, are major contributors to the accelerated um, disease burden of COVID-19. We've heard a lot of talk in the news about the potential for a vaccine in the future. Can you talk a little bit about how vaccines work, how they're developed, and what they do um, inside our bodies? Vaccines are the greatest single boom to public health that have ever been invented past uh, knowing how to drink uh, uh, clean water. Uh, they are just um, the, the most vital part of our defenses against uh, pandemics. And we've eliminated so many uh, terrible scourges of uh, infections over the years. The goal here is to develop an effective vaccine that is safe, that can protect the planet. Um, our immune system, as I told you, once it um, is experienced with a danger signal, it can retain memory of it for life. And uh, some vaccines work very well. You know, we get our childhood vaccines for many pathogens and they work for our whole lives. And others are not so well, like the flu. We need to boost it every year. So there's over 100 candidate vaccines. I hope to see one within the year. Um, keep our fingers crossed, it could be faster, um, but uh, this will be the way moving forward to get to our new normal. Um, but something like the flu or the pneumonia vaccine would not protect against coronavirus, why is no. that? Well, because the, 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 our memory is very specific for the danger signals, one vaccine for one problem. Uh, but being vaccinated now is even more important because people who get two or more infections with COVID um, do much, much worse. Um, and uh, so uh, we, we need to stay up on our, our vaccine status. When we talk about vaccines, I've heard the word antibody used a lot. Can you explain what that is? Antibodies are part of our adaptive immune system. We have these T cells that uh, uh, go in and rip the infections out where they, uh, where they reside. And we have antibodies, these proteins in our blood that are spewed out of uh, uh, cells called B cells that circulate and neutralize danger signals before they've had a chance to infect our tissues. Um, there's a, a, a lot of work going on now that people have recovered from COVID-19, harvesting their antibodies and giving them to people who are acutely ill. We'll have to see if that works out, but it's an interesting concept. I also hear the phrase herd immunity a lot. Can you explain a little bit about what that means and why it's important? Herd immunity is a very important concept. Um, uh, you know, if you have one person in the, in the community infected, um, they could infect literally the entire community if everyone was in contact and spreading this around. If on the other hand, many people in the community have already been infected and have memory, um, and those are the only people that come into contact with this infected person, that immunity of the herd would block it from um, spreading to the most vulnerable people. It takes a lot of people to develop effective herd immunity, but even a little bit uh, goes a long way. 
So I want to get into some of the things that we can do to keep our immune system working um, the best that it possibly can. We see a lot of products that are advertised like vitamins or essential oils claiming to boost the immune system. Is it actually possible that these things could be strengthening our immune system? First, let me tell you, there is no bigger advocate on the planet uh, for developing immune strength, as I like to call it, um, than myself. And I believe that our behaviors affect our immune system. And as we modify our behaviors, we can grow and maintain a healthy immune system. The second thing I will say is that there is virtually nothing that you can go out and buy uh, to do this. And if it is something that is easy um, and uh, 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 is put forth as a quick fix, uh, my antennas go up um, and it probably is uh, far less effective than uh, what is being advertised. Having said that, um, I'll put that off to the end about uh, uh, supplements and, and, and quick fixes and tell you the big four things that lead to immune health. The first and most important thing um, is dietary. And the diet uh, that is best for your immune system is eating real food, mostly plants, and not being uh, obese. Uh, or if you are overweight, you know, working on that. Um, a Mediterranean-like diet uh, or a paleo diet or a hybrid, uh, as my friend Mark Hyman says, the pegan diet, um, all can be very good, but real food is the key to this. Avoiding stripped carbohydrates, raw sugars, um, processed food, um, the, what we call the standard American diet, um, is uh, a great blow to uh, our immune system and generates inflammation, which in a chronic phase is unhealthy. So a healthy diet um, um, uh, that is largely plant-based um, with good uh, food products is, is key. Secondly, is physical activity. And we're generating a lot of uh, uh, very useful information um, uh, and data to show that being sedentary is dangerous to our immune system. Um, and that um, exercising um, moderate to vigorously um, can protect us from common respiratory pathogens. Can it protect us from COVID-19? I'm not here to uh, guarantee that one way or the other, but it has clearly been demonstrated by studies of people from inactive to active that we can control our immune system. Some very recent uh, data, which is calling into question, uh, people used to caution against very vigorous exercise, saying that that could actually suppress our immune system. But some very vigorous uh, exercise studies coming out right now suggest that not only um, might it be good for our immune system, but it might actually help calm inflammation. The third pillar of immunologic health is getting adequate and restful sleep. And at this point in time in the COVID-19 epidemic, that may be harder than ever. Our minds race, we're stressed out, uh, we're worried about um, uh, all types of security in our lives. Uh, but getting uh, more than six and a half, I favor uh, greater than seven hours uh, an evening of sleep um, is very uh, important to our immune system. When we get less than that, that drives up inflammation and you know, tends to uh, grind our immune, this wonderful immune sh uh, machine um, um, to a halt. Um, sleep is hard to correct. And so there's a lot of uh, online programs. Um, uh, we have a wonderful program at the Cleveland Clinic called Go to Sleep, um, uh, which is a cognitive behavioral approach to getting your sleep back. The last thing is the hardest and the most important. And I would say that the greatest threat to immunologic health over our lifetime um, is psychosocial stress. We now have molecular evidence that when we are, we are happy, and that doesn't mean joy, you know, we won the game. When we are internally happy with our, our lives, this uh, eudynamic state, um, uh, of, of, of being satisfied. Um, inflammation goes down and immune health goes up. When we're socially isolated, when we have uh, stresses uh, that may be beyond our control, 
um, when we are depressed or anxious, when we don't handle our stresses the way that we really want to. All of that is immunocompromising. And now there's a tremendous amount of data to show that there are mind-body techniques ranging from what I call the bottom up, using our bodies like yoga and tai chi, the top down, uh, things like mindfulness meditation um, uh, that can calm the flame of inflammation and, and bring us help. Now, on top of all of those things, the last thing I'll say is that it goes without saying, you got to get rid of the bad things. You can't live this type of life smoking a cigarette or drinking excesses of alcohol or taking drugs um, or exposing yourself to uh, toxins. So get rid of the negatives, healthy diet, healthy exercise, healthy sleep, healthy mind, and that leads to immune health. And you can generate this over a matter of weeks you can start to optimize it. We, we know this for a fact. And uh, I want everybody to get on the bus. Yeah, so you kind of hinted at it, but I wanna just reiterate. So we do have some control to optimize or strengthen our immune system. It's not necessarily set in one way for our entire lives. But it, that's exactly right. And in fact, we all age at a different rate. Um, it, it, immunologically uh, uh, speaking, I mean, we age at a different rate. That otherwise, you look at somebody, you say, oh, that guy is 75. He looks 55. This person looks 75, and they're only 55. Our immune systems do the same thing, and we're starting to understand that lifestyle modifications have a lot to do with it. Heavy tobacco use, the onset of depression, poor sleep, uh, sedentary lifestyle, all very important. The last thing I want to bring up is that, you know, I'm not here to make fun of the quick fix, uh, quick fixes offered for immune health. And there's a lot of good things uh, to be said about data uh, for anti-inflammatory supplements such as curcumin and quercetin and uh, 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 a vitamin D and a variety of other factors. Um, uh, in the monograph that I give to every one of my immune disease patients, I tell them that you know taking uh, a balanced multivitamin and make sure they're not vitamin D deficient is absolutely uh, important as part of this. Uh, but the quick fix that you think you can take vitamin C and all of a sudden eliminate the need to do all of these behaviors is not accurate. Um, and uh, uh, we look for more evidence uh, of how effective these things are to generate immune health, but they they pale in terms of a, a lifetime and a chronic application, healthy eating, healthy exercise, healthy sleep, and um, uh, relieving psychosocial stress. How can we measure our immune health? Well, there's there's two large ways that we think about this. Uh, one is uh, you know the the, the a research-based way of measuring our immune health. And we don't have access to that, but we can measure our innate and adaptive immune responses. And that's how many of these studies that look how our immune system goes over our age are actually done. You know, a more transparent uh, view of immune health is that, you know, uh, how, how many and how severe uh, are the infections that you get during a calendar year? You know, if you live like a, a place like Northern Ohio on the North Coast here, everybody has a few colds a year. It's not, doesn't mean you're immunodeficient, um, uh, but, you know, is three too many? Is, you know, one enough? Uh, uh, um, these are our ways. If you have a serious infection or you develop an immunologic disease, that means that there's some, you know, more fundamental problem um, with your immune system. Uh, but it, it, there's a, a lot of validity to just thinking about this clearly. And the last question I want to ask you is, what kind of exciting research is happening in the area of immunology? Um, what are you looking forward to learning, um, or what can we expect to learn more about in the future? Everything. We're, we're particularly interested in um, proving that the behaviors that I uh, have um, suggested to you are actually effective. And we have a program that uh, is just uh, coming uh, uh, to fruition called Immune Strength, which is a 10-week 
um, online uh, e-coached behavioral modification program that teaches uh, healthy eating, exercise, sleep, and stress. Um, and we're looking to see in a research setting, can it enhance our innate and adaptive immune responses? Can it improve quality of life? Can it improve our sleep and increase uh, our energy and decrease our fatigue? Can it lower our pain levels? Um, all of these are experimental questions. You know, um, uh, I believe that this is true, but there's a famous saying that says, trust but verify. And uh, uh, we're doing the work in this space uh, to do this. We're starting with heavy immunologic diseases to test this on them. And we're now uh, starting to look at people who are worried about their own immunologic health in the COVID-19 era. So more, more this summer uh, about uh, how that project will be going. Other than that, we're now also working in COVID-19 space, taking the drugs that are used to treat immune-mediated diseases and actually turning them on COVID-19 because this is a, an infection that co-ops our immune system to do terrible amounts of damage as well. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Calabrese, for this really important information. We really appreciate it. And for the latest on COVID-19, you can visit clevelandclinic.org slash coronavirus. To listen to more of our Health Essentials podcast with our Cleveland Clinic experts, visit clevelandclinic.org slash HE podcast or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And for more health tips, news, and information, you can follow us at Cleveland Clinic, one word, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for joining us.